Lord Jesus, I just ask you for prophecy, for revelation, for truth, for wisdom, for peace, for glory. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to be with me in this drawing as I convey what you want me to do, what you want me to say, what you want me to hear, what you want the viewers to hear. And I say to you, to the viewers, thank you for being here. You are blessed. Lord Jesus, I ask you to just give them wisdom, give them understanding, give them peace. Help them in your design, in your glory. Fix us, God, because we need help. We need repair. We love you and we thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on that cross, the blood that was shed on Calvary. And I thank everyone who's watching this at this very moment who hears my voice. And I just want to let them know that they are loved. They are important. They have a destiny. They have a fingerprint. And they are unique. In every way, shape, and form. Jesus, I thank you, God, for the word. Jesus, I thank you, God, for your presence. I thank you, God, for Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the hand-picked men that you choose and that you guide and I thank you God for this day and everyone watching this now and Lord I thank you for my talent that the devil so wants to stop and the devil has tried to stop but he can't so Lord Jesus I just thank you in this moment in truth and power and provision because I just want to keep going in your love and in your power in Jesus name The Lord has put a scripture on my heart that he wants me to share with you. And the scripture is Proverbs chapter 30, verse 19. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maiden. The Holy Spirit has put on my heart these images. And he's put on my heart the scripture to share with you. And I'm going to be prophesying. And I'm going to be talking about dreams. I'm going to be talking about the world. As I paint the serpent. And I'm going to be talking about Revelation. And I'm going to be camping out on this scripture. So the Lord put this image in my heart because the Lord shows me things. The Lord prompts me to look for him. And the Lord prompts me to be diligent whenever he talks to me. He wants me to be obedient because it's so easy to be lazy. And so the Lord told me, I want you to go see something. And I went out and looked. And I saw an eagle, a powerful eagle, coming down with something in its mouth. And I wondered what it was. And I found this scripture. And it's the closest thing I could find to what God wanted to, me sh to show me and to convey to you. And... What I took what was in the bird's mouth was a snake. But as my drawing progressed, I knew that wouldn't work. And so I had the eagle grab the serpent, the snake, the devil. Because to me, the eagle is a symbol of power, a symbol of purity symbol of freedom as I live in the United States it's our our symbol and it's a symbol of who we are as a as a nation presumably but I know that our nation is going in the wrong direction 
for all the wrong reasons. Because there's men who have decided that they want the world to be what they want instead of the natural order which God has given us. God would not make a world where it would be destroyed. God is perfect. The devil is a copier. The devil is not in the details. God is in the details. And the devil steals everything that God does. And we just want to be taken up in eagle's wings. We want to be covered with their feathers, Lord. We will not be afraid by the hours that fly by day. Ten thousand may fall at my right, but none shall come near me. I need you to know that God has a purpose for your life. But you have to keep yourself pure. You have to put away the things that are evil and put up wings of salvation, wings of glory. Because God is a good God. He didn't bring Jesus down just so we can keep sinning. He brought Jesus down so we can be convicted in our sin and live a life of purity to where the devil cannot get in. I see myself finding my way and helping people through my art. And the provision that he gives me is just enough to never spoil me. And I'm so grateful. And he can do that for you. And then I looked and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So I would like to talk about a dream that I had last night um, that I would like to share. So in my dream, I was, I was like in a... Um, I was like in a gathering, uh, a spiritual, religious, uh, I wouldn't call it religious, but it was, um, it was like a revival, uh, a revival type meeting where all of God's chosen were gathered and in one accord. And in the dream, everyone had this, it was like a tea bag full of something that everyone was going to eat in one accord. One accord, and I'm not sure what it was, but it was like a communion. But it was it wasn't like the, the communion crackers. It was more. It was like a, a mixture of some stuff in it, like in a tea bag. I, I don't know what it was, but in the dream, everybody had one, but I didn't have one, and so they were about to eat it together, and um, uh, the. The evangelist uh, Jonathan Shuttlesworth was there, and he said, "There's some over on the table. You can get one." So I went over to the table to get it, and just before I got it, um, Pope Francis showed up, and he was um, he looked healthy, and he started talking to me, and he was being friendly with me, and for whatever reason, he wanted to be my friend. And in that moment, I started to pity him. And the reason why I'm talking about Pope Francis at this very moment is because I'm drawing the serpent. And the serpent parades as the angel of light. And Pope Francis is not who you think he is. He has deceived everyone. And he is going to help bring in evil and promote it to the point where no one has else has a choice. And the evil I'm talking about is the assault on values. Pope Francis recently had a show on Disney 
and he said to these these kids were interviewing him and he said to these kids that the church's teaching on sexuality is still in diapers. Now, what does he mean by that? Is he saying that it's no longer about marriage between a man and a woman and that we must evolve to the world because the world is our enemy? Because as you can see, the serpent wants to attack traditional marriage. The serpent wants to attack the natural order of God's progression. And he wants to distort it to the point of no return. Because I, like I say it, say over and over again, the devil hates us. And he has so many people deceived. In Matthew nineteen four through 6 Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and two shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two flesh, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. But they want to destroy marriage. They want to pervert it. Because there are men out there who have not only the means and the money, but they have the power to change things. And they want to impose new values on our society. And the young people are their target. That is why you see the schools being infiltrated. You're seeing television and media being infiltrated. And this is who they are. They're targeting our children because this is what they want to force on the next generation. And it's all about being inclusive and sustainability. They want to get the government on board for the new value system. And if they don't get it, they will transform our youth to demand. And we see it happening. We see these poor kids being brainwashed. We see these kids who have no, no clue who Jesus is, no clue who the Holy Spirit is, no clue what the power of Jesus can bring. All they know is that they think that Christians are evil. And they want to use the opportunity to write the social contract. The social contract. And they're forcing new values and the, the youth are already believing it and accepting these values. And it's going to be too late. And we need to pray. Because going on social media and exploiting it, going on places like the Daily Wire and, you know, these news places, MSNBC, whatever, all they do is exploit it. And the only way we can stop this is if we get in one accord and pray and fast and you may scoff at that but that is the only solution going on the daily wire and exploiting it is not going to do anything it is only going to feed the fire and there's a thing called the corporate Equ equality index and it was put f together by George Soros in 2002 and it's a human rights deal and when you sign up you get points and you get scored and when you get these scores you get incentives and you get passes and that is why you're seeing people like Bud Light Nike all the companies getting on board with this and there's not and one thing that we can do about it because they are going after our youth and it'll be the destruction of the human race because they're going to take out tradition and put in this place, this thing after the youth. And right now it's only at 2%, but it's going to keep growing if we don't get on our knees fast and pray. Because I'm telling you right now, guys like Pope Francis, guys like George Soros, guys like Klaus Schwab, they're going to get their way if we don't get down on our knees and pray. And our ship is sailing. And we have a choice. Pray or just let it happen. 
because we underestimate the power of prayer. So just remember that the corporate equity index, and we are in terrible times right now, and Pope Francis is going to be the one leading the ship. And I'm going to make a strong prediction that the next Pope will be Wilton Gregory because Wilton Gregory checks off all the proper boxes. And I hope I'm wrong, but once Wilton Gregory becomes Pope, it's over. Because I had a dream back in 2020 that I'll never forget. And Wilton Gregory was once the Archbishop of Atlanta, Georgia. And I've had run-ins with him. I know who he is. I know the type of person he is. I truly believe not only is he a Freemason, but he's also a Satanist. And I also believe that Satan is in him. And we must pray and fast that it doesn't happen. Because once he becomes Pope, it is over. He's going to have the whole world on board. The whole world is going to be on board with this man. All in the name of social justice. And then you have men like James Martin S.J. who set up websites and causes for the destruction of traditional marriage. And he's going after our kids with a smile on his face. And he's doing it all for himself. It's all for him. It's all for his glory. We must fight this. Because one thing I can't stand are hypocrites. So, another way of looking at this scripture is you know, a boat does not leave a trail in the ocean. An eagle does not leave a trail in the air. A man's love for his wife and a wife's love for her husband leaves no physical trail. And a slithering snake leaves no trail on the rocks. God put this on my heart and I don't understand it sometimes, but I just be obedient to God. And I hope you enjoy this drawing. And I know that uh, I enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, just I just thank you for taking the time to listen to me and to understanding who I am. You know, I, I'm trying to prophesy. I'm, I don't claim to be a prophet. I'm just seeking the, the prophetic gifts and taking my art to the level of where God wants me to use it. And like I said in the beginning, the devil wants me to lay down my pen and shut up. And I want to give a, a quick testimony of um, when I was growing up um, I was attacked by a dog and I don't know if you see the scar but the dog tried to take out my hand and this was back when I was very young and I saw that it as a sign of I'm on the right track we have to keep ourselves pure we have to turn off the pornography, turn off the things that are clogging up our ears and our eyes towards the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I just pray, I pray for those who are watching that you cover them with your angels. You cover us with your power. Protect marriage, God. Thank you, Father, for this day. 
Thank you, Father, for this night and this hour. Peace be upon those who are watching. May we figure out what to do, how to pray, to stop this evil prediction, to stop this evil bulldozer that's trying to hurt us. Uh, another thing, too, is, you know, Bill Gates, he practically lives at the Vatican. You know, they're planning something. And everybody is on board. And I think there are a lot of people who are wise, but they're coming after our youth. The youth are the ones who are going to be voting. The youth are the ones who are being manipulated. The youth are the ones who are there, they are going after, and we need to we need to be diligent in our faith, in our walk, and we have to be an example. We can't be judgmental. We can't be exploiting people. We have to be praying. We have to be praying, and we have to be loving. We can't be exploiting people because exploiting them will just be gasoline on the fire. It's just going to be worse. And that is what like men like Matt Walsh do. They exploit for their own monetary gain. They exploit for their own idol worship. So let me end with a prayer. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for letting me share what I'm sharing, God, and let people know the consequences that are about to come. The consequences of not having fervor for prayer, for not being diligent in the Holy Spirit. And they need to heed this warning that whoever comes to the Lord with a judgment on their hearts will not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the day. Spite will not be expect, acceptable in the kingdom. God is calling those who want to hear his voice, who want to get alone in a room and seek his face, seek his touch. The pastures are pure. His pastures are pure. His pastures are green. His waters are still. Help those watching, Lord, to see your light, to feel your presence, and to bask in your glory. In Jesus' name.